Thank you. Good afternoon. And uh, thank you for having us uh, on this uh, platform. I wish to thank uh, the Merck Foundation for providing this uh, uh, platform and their uh, excellences, in particular, uh, President Edgar Lungu, who opened the meeting yesterday, and uh, together with uh, the Zambian first uh, lady, Mrs. Uh, Esther uh, Lungu. My name is Dora Celia. I'm the Minister of Information and Broadcasting uh, Services in Zambia. I'm also the government uh, spokesperson. Uh, um, we've been uh, a year now uh, since uh, the pandemic in uh, Zambia. We had the first case uh, on the 18th of March uh, in 2020. And I think uh, what we first saw in the country was a uh, pure panic and also a very clear divide about uh, this is the disease that affects those people and not us. I personally went into one of the high residential areas and was uh, told openly, uh, Minister, you are the one who's going to bring this disease to us. This is a disease for you people and uh, not us. It's for you people who get on planes. And that's because of the uh, manner in which the disease uh, came into Zambia. Uh, it was through a family that had gone on holiday uh, in Europe. So we were very clear from the beginning that we needed to be very um, uh, concise in terms of our communication strategies uh, so that uh, we could win the hearts of the citizens and uh, convince them that this disease could affect uh, everyone. We had a six uh, uh, approach, uh, uh, in term a six step approach in terms of our communication strategy. Uh, beginning with uh, awareness, uh, beginning uh, with uh, uh, making sure that we provide accurate information, uh, that our communication is honest, that it is timely, and also to ensure that uh, we show people that we, the leaders ourselves, care and uh, that we will take action and respect the citizens. Um, since uh, the first case in March last year, for the first three months, His Excellency the President was doing uh, a press brief to the nation every two weeks. Uh, we put up a team, a multi-sectoral team, uh, to ensure that uh, people understood that this was just not a health issue. It was also a social issue. People were depressed. People had mental health uh, issues. Uh, people were asked to stay at home, and as such, they were having financial challenges at a household level. And of course, uh, because there was a partial lockdown in Zambia, but in the region, some countries are totally gone on lockdown. And being a landlocked country, we had a lot of challenges, and people had to understand that this too was an economic uh, problem. Uh, the challenge was how to communicate all these facets of the COVID uh, pandemic uh, to the nation up to the household uh, level. Uh, what was important was for us to communicate with one voice and to be uh, indeed the first to communicate about uh, the pandemic. We appreciated that with social media now, there were going to be so many sources of information and uh, we had to make sure that uh, we communicate first and uh, convince the citizens uh, about what they needed to do to protect themselves. Uh, even though it was a multi-sectoral approach, the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting Services with the Minister of Health, we collaborated in continuous uh, uh, press uh, briefings to the nation every day for almost three months uh, so that uh, we could uh, share with the nation what we call the five, five golden rules, the usual uh, cleaning of your hands and sanitizing your hands, social distancing, masking, uh, taking yourself to the hospital as quickly as possible if you had any symptoms and reporting others uh, with symptoms. And uh, it did work in the first uh, wave, but uh, clearly we saw challenges with the second wave because by then people started believing that it had passed us. And so from November to about March this year, uh, we had an increased number of deaths. And again, we had to get back to the basics to convince the citizen that this disease was with us. We are now in the vaccine stage. I publicly got vaccinated myself uh, yesterday, and uh, we still see an uphill battle in terms of communication. What my colleagues were talking about on the platform, uh, once again, that no, the vaccines, they are vaccines for Europeans and Americans and different vaccines for Africans, uh, that what is in these vaccines, the confidence issues that all these vaccines are being produced in Europe and America, not in Africa. Uh, they are issues about no, they affect uh, men's fertility and, and, and so on. Just as we saw in the HIV pandemic, 
that uh, people thought they would rush to witch doctors. Others believe you can clean yourself of the coronavirus by uh, just drinking alcohol. So now we are in the vaccination stages and we are dealing with these issues, these bits, and we have to continue. And we have heightened our communication strategy to take it to household level, to schools, to high, uh, learning institutions, uh, to various uh, uh, labor groups, so that uh, we can uh, attempt uh, to demystify uh, the vaccination. Now, I know I did hear the chairman talking about running out of time. I just thought I'd give that background for Zambia. I think that uh, the minister from Gambia made a very important point about having some of these uh, uh, manufacturing of uh, medical uh, supplies, especially medicines, are produced in Africa. And I think there is an opportunity really to explore uh, and exploit the logistical nightmares we all saw uh, at the beginning of the pandemic last year, including just uh, masks, uh, PPEs, and uh, testing uh, uh, equipment. So I, I think that even at a regional level, we have to really, going forward, exploit this. And I think this is part of the bigger communication strategy to get Africans to believe in themselves, uh, uh, to avoid the, uh, the, the myths around uh, pandemics and other diseases as we've seen in the past. I think it's going to depend a lot on us having some of these home, homegrown solutions uh, participation in some of these international collaborations. And I think that uh, Africa is not short of a scientific cadre that uh, can be able uh, to save uh, Africa and the rest of the world uh, in that manner. So for Zambia, we uh, have so far vaccinated 14,000 uh, people. And uh, we are hoping that uh, we can continue uh, to get as many people to come forward uh, but uh, what my colleagues said from other countries, it is the same. There's still a lot of resistance. There's still a lot of myths around vaccination. And I think we all have to continue to keep singing about uh, the benefits of the vaccines and how they've saved humankind uh, in the past. Uh, thank you.